Let me mention now the third reason why uh, the third lesson that comes out of this, this study of the potential implications for the Montana economy of implementation of the Clean Power Plan. And that is the fact that any intervention you make in the economy which impacts electric prices is impossible to escape for businesses and households within the U.S. So if you're looking at a national policy which is geared towards accelerating the retirement of current coal-producing electric power stations, not just in Montana, but across the country, then you are removing from the portfolio of power generation a considerable number of fairly low-cost electric generating stations. That is going to have profound impacts on electric prices, both in Montana, in terms of the electricity we and ourselves produce, but also on the wholesale markets for the other generators around the country, and particularly in the Pacific Northwest, that Montana does daily transactions with. Higher electricity prices raise the cost of doing business, particularly for energy-intensive manufacturing operations. Those operations have choices to make in terms of how much they choose to invest in their expansion here in the U.S. relative to possible expansions that could take, take place abroad. When you raise electricity prices, it has a negative effect on those kinds of businesses within the economy, and those businesses in particular uh, pay high wages and are an important part both of Montana and of the national economy. So those are the three lessons from the study. Let me talk about a couple other issues that have come up within the study. Why does the study say coal strip has to close? In fact, the study does not say coal strip has to close. Uh, the study looked at different scenarios for complying with the Clean Power Plan and chose to look at the scenario where all of coal strip had to close. Now, why is that so? It has to do with the scale of the challenge for Montana to meet the mandate of the Clean Power Plan. So if you look at the current emissions of all of the coal burning, uh, excuse me, all the fossil fuel and coal burning uh, electric generating stations within the state of Montana, and you look at what they're emitting today, and you look at what they must emit by year 2030, which is when the end of the compliance period is for the Clean Power Plan, it is a 47% reduction. So for example, if we were to close Unit 1 and Unit 2, that would not be sufficient to meet the mandate of the Clean Power Plan. If we were to close Units 1, 2, and half of 3, 3 and 4, of course, being the two larger of the, of the, uh, of the four units at Coal Strip, 1, 2, and half of 3 is just short of what would be required to meet the mandate of the Clean Power Plan. So you're looking at a facility that has four units and where only one and a half perhaps or less could be operated was thought to be a significant economic challenge to the viability of that particular power station, particularly since the fixed cost would be spread in the revenue of a smaller number of units. That is why that particular, man that particular option for compliance was chosen. It does fulfill uh, the requirement that I think any responsible policy for complying with the Clean Power Plan has to meet. Namely, it has to be big enough reduction. A second question that might come up is why didn't we come up with some other asset to replace the power that is lost with the uh, loss of coal strip? In particular, why didn't we look at some renewable options, especially wind? The reason is because what is lost when coal strip is, is, is forced to shut down to comply with the EPA's rule is a baseload generation resource. In other words, it is a resource which is available, dispatchable to the power grid and those who manage the grid on a 24-7 basis, whether the sun is shining or the wind is blowing. Uh, other sources, particularly wind, are not that way. Not that way. So wind power in particular is one which is often not available when the power is needed. In fact, uh, if you were to build a wind farm large enough to deliver the power reliably that would be lost if coal strip 
uh, were to be lost and to replace that power, then you would be talking about an enormous uh, investment in excess of $5 billion to replace that with renewable power.